Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will explain leaf oat one osteotomy. It is mainly used for repositioning in the maxilla in all three dimensions. The leaf oat one osteotomy is designed to separate the tooth bearing maxillary component from the superior part of the maxilla. The segment always contains the bony palate. The mobilized segment can be moved in every direction. The procedure is very versatile tool to correct maxillary deformities. If changes in vertical maxillary height are intended, it is of crucial importance to use a fixed skeletal marker that is K wire or screw, which will allow for vertical measurements before and after the osteotomy is anchored into the nasofrontal junction. Do a proper planning for leaf foot one osteotomy. For this procedure, the buccal sulcus approach is used. A periosteal elevator is inserted between the nasal mucosa and the lateral wall of the nose on one side, a curved retractor uh, is inserted behind the maxillary tuberosity. A further instrument is used to retract upward the lip and mucoperiosteal flap, exposing the lateral maxilla. The horizontal osteotomy is usually made at the level of the nasal floor at a safe distance that is 5 mm from the apices of the teeth. When indicated, additional vertical interdental osteotomies to segment the dental arch are now performed. The osteotomies are completed after the down fracture. The segments should be designed to ensure adequate blood supply to the individual osteotomized segments. A curved Pterygoid chisel or osteotome is placed with the curvature pointing medially and inferiorly between the tuberosity and the pterygoid plates. A mallet is used to drive the osteotome medially to complete the pterygomaxillary disjunction. The position of the tip of the osteotome or chisel can be checked with a palpating finger. An upward and posteriorly oriented osteotome will not reliably separate the maxilla from the pterygoid plates. It is also associated with increased risk of bleeding from the pterygoid plexus and internal maxillary artery. The nasal septum has to be separated from the palate with either an osteotome or septum scissor special guarded osteotomes are used for this purpose to protect the nasal mucosa the lateral nasal wall is then separated using a nasal osteotome or saw special guarded osteotomes are used for this purpose to protect the nasal mucosa the osteotomy should end anteriorly to the greater palatine vessels and nerve to prevent bleeding. The maxilla is down fractured anteriorly with the help of a bone hook or manually. The down fracture maneuver allows for a complete visualization of the osteotomy lines. Remaining bony bridges at the posterior aspect of the maxilla can be transected under direct vision. To minimize bleeding when trimming bone close to the posterior maxilla, the soft tissue should be protected. The down fracture technique allows good access to the nasal septum for septal correction when indicated. It may be useful to use a taser mobilizer are curved osteotome which are inserted behind the maxilla on each side in order to pull the maxilla forward. 
Road disinfection for SEP can also be used for this purpose. At this point, the mobilized maxilla should be free and able to be moved by the surgeon's hands more than is actually required. Interior movements can be facilitated with traction using a wire directly attached to the maxilla or to the bone screw in the maxilla. The interdental osteotomies or any additional palatal osteotomies to correct transverse discrepancies are now completed. Care should be taken to preserve adequate blood supply to the individual osteomatized segments. Mandibulo maxillary fixation is performed to position the maxilla to the desired relationship with the mandible. A prefabricated surgical splint or wafer may be used to facilitate this. The maxillomandibular complex is now rotated around the condylar hinge until the desired vertical dimension has been attained. The pre-planned vertical position of the maxilla is then established against a fixed reference marker in the nasofrontal junction. When necessary, maxillary bone is removed with a drill until that vertical relationship is achieved passively. If the nasal septum or the inferior turbinates are preventing upward movement of the maxilla, they are reduced at this stage. Posterior movements are rarely indicated. If needed, a segment of bone should be removed from the posterior aspect of the maxilla. This is usually performed under direct vision from a down fracture approach. Superior movements or a shortening of the maxilla requires an ostectomy of a bone segment in upward movement of the maxilla. The septum needs to be vertically trimmed to a wide septal buckling deviation which may lead to impaired airway flow and nasal deformation. In large impactions, the inferior turbinates should be trained to a wide airway obstruction. Inferior movements or lengthening of the maxilla is possible but results in a gap and non-contact situation between the upper and lower part of the maxilla. The gaps need to be bone grafted usually with free bone grafts from the iliac crest or the outer table of the skull or allogenic bone. The amount of lengthening is checked against the vertical reference mark at the nasofrontal junction. Asymmetric movements and rotation are also possible. In this case, a bone gap may occur on one side and bone may need to be trimmed on the contralateral side. Internal fixation is performed with four mini uh, plates, usually L-shaped or reverse L-shaped along the pyriform aperture and zygomatoco maxillary buttress. Care must be taken to passively adapt the plates to the bone surfaces. The screws in the mobilized maxillary segment must avoid the tooth roots. After osteosynthesis, the need for bone grafts, that is by rotational movements, should be evaluated and if required, they should be placed at this time. After completion of osteosynthesis on both sides, the MMF is released and the resulting occlusion is checked against the pre-planned position. The splint may be fixed to the maxillary teeth with a few thin wires especially when the maxilla is segmented and left in place during the healing phase to allow for neuromuscular adaption and position control. The glabellar reference screw is removed.
extensive interior movements of the maxilla will stretch the soft tissues and develop of the face and will lead to bilateral widening of the alar base and the nasal vestibules this can be prevented by performing an alar cinch suture which engages both alar bases in an attempt to approximate them towards the midline immediately before wound closure thank you wish you best of luck